All right. Let's do this shit. Here we go. We're on Belshir Vestige, ladies and metalgen. And spawning in the top right pos top left position. I don't give a fuck. Could be the top right position for all I care. As the blue Terran player from Team Root Gaming, it is Chad Minigun Jones. Also known as Chad Lady Killer slash big fan of Wendy's Jones. It's probably the number one contributor to littering at the Root House. And his opponent in the Southeast who sent out a very early probe for some... Ooh, not quite the most epic proxy. But it's coming from none other than the Brovolo himself, Avalo. That probe turns its back to us. It also gives no fucks. So, we saw... I actually didn't see the first two games of this. I'll just be um, completely straightforward honest. Um, so I just kind of jumped in here and said, guys, let's just raise the prize pool by 100 bucks for no reason. 10 Supply Gateway for Avalo will be his choice of tactics. And it looks like this is just going to be a standard, straight-up, zealot, mothership core, stalker rush. So this this should already get pretty weird. Um, goodness knows what's going to happen in this game. But it'll probably be really weird. So minigun... Is sitting that guy. So it looks like Minigun wants to go for a Reaper expand again. And this build is actually, um, this build is actually pretty solid versus what Minigun's doing. Uh, unfortunately for him, the SCV saw this, so he can make the Reaper and then make a bunker and then make a Marine. Like, he doesn't have to commit to it. Um, yeah, so this, this, this shouldn't be too hard. The only thing I will say is that the Zealot Mothership Core Stalker attack should at the very least contain Minigun for a little bit, but also pick off this Supply Depot. And Minigun really doesn't want to build a second Depot to wall this off, um, unless he's feeling pretty brave. So let's see what he does. Okay, no second Depot there. It's so risky. It's one of the most annoying things when you just lose your Supply Depot to the Mothership Core and the Stalker. And the Zealot's actually skirting around the left side, uh, maybe checking for proxies. The nice thing about Avalo's weird positioning... Actually, I don't know if there's anything nice about this positioning, but um, if it wasn't spotted, that would be really nice because, like, the only... The, I can understand Avalo's logic behind the proxy placement. He doesn't want to put it on his opponent's side of the field, but by not putting it on his opponent's side of the field, Minigun, he might think that it's on his side of the field, I guess, and over-defend if that's possible versus this type of attack. I'm not 100% sure, but... The Reaper is coming over. This Mothership course should be able to spot it. So he knows. I don't think Avalo will kill this Reaper. That'd be like a miracle. Um, but the second Stalker will probably be rallied into the main base. He'll try to, or he'll try to catch it in the open field. But that's just not likely. Um, actually, this is really good. If he can keep, if he can kill this Reaper, that could really screw Minigun. There's the command center. And he can, he can actually attack this from the low ground. Which makes this game even weirder than originally seemed. Was he going to proxy his Stargate here too? See, that's just weird. Um... But Minigun, he's checking. He's looking around. The Reaper's heading back towards the right side. The Zealot is here with the Stalker and the Mothership Core. The second Stalker is being sent back into the main base to defend against the Reaper. And look, there it is. Already here to just poke back at this Reaper. Not too bad. Second gas is done. And Avalo is tucked the probe on the, the left side. And Minigun is checking absolutely everywhere. But here we go. This Supply Depot under attack. Could be forced to spend resources repairing it. He'd love to kill these Marines. Got no objections to that, Your Honor. And these SCVs are going to be forced to repair. If he can pick off the SCVs, of course, that's another great way, great pickup for him. Uh, two more barracks are on the way. So Minigun's just playing like the one of the most defensive setups you can get, uh, basically, in this matchup. Stalker does need to be worried, though, of that bunker. And that Marine would love to do some more real damage to the Stalker. He just needs to be careful. There's the second Stalker, so this harass gets a bit more real. Um, and there's the Stargate being built inside the main base of Avalo. Minigun will see it with his SCV scout. So he knows what's up. The supply depot is still being forced to spend resources repairing it. It doesn't actually show up on the resources loss tab until the supply depot has been killed. Um, and I don't, he might not actually get to kill it. Ooh, Mothership Force taking some heat. This is the perfect positioning for Avalo. If Minigun tries to move down this ramp, he's just going to lose SCV. He's just going to lose whatever he sends down this ramp because of that Zealot and uh, Time Warp. 
And this is just Avalo doing a really, really great way to make his build work, despite the fact that it didn't really work. Oh, there's the time warp. The Marines baited it. Run back. Avalo really wants to kill this depot. Minigun is, if, if he keeps this depot alive, I'll actually be pretty impressed. Uh, he has the engineering bay on the way, but oh, supply block on this killed pylon by the Reaper prevents the Oracle. That is so frustrating because Avalo's, Avalo's Oracle has been delayed by at least a minute now. Does lose a Stalker. And I almost feel like he, he kind of has to kill this supply depot. He has to get something for this investment of aggression. Um, that Oracle not building because of that Reaper killing the pylon, maybe one of the most... Oh, that's, that's just really upsetting. Um, Stalkers are still doing what they can. The Zealot will probably be asked to leave the premises. He has another time warp available, um, but it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to bait any Marines down. Minigun seems relatively well set up in his home. Um, missile turrets on the way. Factory is coming in much faster than on the previous map. And this Reaper runs back into the main base. The probe's being pulled to try to fight it. The Oracle will finish, but I don't think he wants to spend the Oracle, uh, energy on killing this reaper goodness gracious no and the fact that he has to really sucks for him so the oracle now moving back across the field he needs to turn off that pulsar beam he does not need that running he's actually just going to burn through all this oracle's energy um but warp gate is feels really weird to see warp gate researching from this position but i guess it's still somewhat defendable um, my only fear is that if Minigun moves out an actual army, um, this is not a situation where the Mothership Corps can really help Avalo defend. Avalo can't really defend against this because I maybe mean, his Photon Overcharge just doesn't reach that far. He can build a third Nexus, I guess. Why not? But as we can see, the Oracle with no energy also presents no threat. And the Marines, coupled with the Missile Turret, a great defense, especially since they have Combat Shields, so they would actually take the Oracle, I think. I think at that point, it takes the Oracle three hits to kill a Marine, which is also pretty sexy. So Minigun has held the Cheddar reasonably well. He only lost two workers to the initial harass. Um, Avalo is on the equal number of bases now. His second Oracle is out. But he's going to need to do a little bit of juking and jiving if he wants to find anywhere that he can deal some damage with this setup that he's opened with because it just seems that for now he can't really get much from it. Um, going straight to a robotics bay as well. So he's not trying to show that same Templar-based uh, style. As he did in the last game. He's up to three gateways. Getting a much faster plus one armor. And I'd like to see him. Yeah, okay, there we go. There's the rest of the gas being mined. I'd almost like to see him try to take a fast third base. As, as ridiculous as that would be. Because of the medevac's time, medevac timings. As well as the... Um... Oh, nice revelation. That's actually almost better. With three oracles and the use of that revelation. Being able to spot this army is actually really, really nice. And there's the scan from Minigun. He sees actually sees everything inside that main base um knowing that there's a robotics bay is really nice for him because he's like well this time around i don't actually need to go right for those ghosts which means you know i, I maybe not build as many medevacs as i'd like to but i can still get out some vikings without too much trouble i already have the tech structure that i need to deal with this and it shouldn't be too difficult for him now concussive shell is about to finish up for minigun avalos hanging in there he's got these oracles he still sees the terran army another revelation is thrown he just wants to have perfect vision of it. He does have enough energy for a photon overcharge. And there it is, immediately activated. Unfortunately, the cybernetics core in this gateway, like I said, it's their time to die. Um, no preemptive replacement of the cybernetics core means that he can't get a twilight council. So he can't go right for plus two armor. But he can get... Um, he can't just get his plus one attack. He can still build Colossi, which I guess is, is his primary goal at this point in the game. Um, and it looks like Minigun might just try to wait out the Photon Overcharge, but I hope he realizes with full energy, this Mothership Core had full energy, so the Photon Overcharge, by the time that he tries to attack him, he'll have enough to use it again on the Nexus and the Natural, and maybe he could try to go right into the main base after he forces it a second time, but I don't think he needs to, and there's the big drop into the main base, oh, everything is here though to defend for Avalo, this shouldn't do anything for Minigun, and he's already been forced back, which is really nice. Oh, Minigun, he really wants to drop here, but a couple units run into the natural. This Photon Cannon, though, his way, he's just kind of saying, no, uh, no copy Pastorino, sir, and picks everything off with those Oracles. The drop hits the main base. There are Zealots and Stalkers here, but those will die very quickly. The Colossus is coming up. Range is not done yet. He might try to snipe this. The Oracle's actually adding in a lot of damage. They've managed to get... Actually, the Oracles are killing a lot of shit right here, but it seems that Minigun is still going to do a pretty solid amount of damage. He's traded away a lot of his army, um, but he's killed off 
Uh, he still actually has an army lead, and he's killed off a good couple of probes. So, meaning on now the economic lead, the army supply lead, and a third command center. This is a really good position to be in uh, if you're minigun. I almost think... I guess he doesn't have enough army to do anything ridiculous like an SCV pull, but... That was pretty solid. I think Avalo keeping the Colossi alive is the only reason he's not completely boned. Um, has he not rebuilt the cybernetics core? Am I blind? What the... F there it is. I think he just now realizes... Oh, man, that factory's in the third. So this game has gotten... Really awkward. This Oracle still has its Pulsar Beam on, too, so it's just going to lose all of its energy. Goodness knows how long that was going for. You know, Pulsar Beam, out of any ability that requires energy to be turned on, like Cloak, Pulsar Beam uses the most. Uh, it's like 2 energy per second, whereas Banshee Cloak is 0.9, and then Ghosts are 1.1 energy a second for Cloak. So or it, Oracles burn through their energy really fast if you leave them running. Really bad for electric bills. But Vikings are on the way, and due to that weird cybernetics core timing, it's back now. But the Twilight Council still has not yet been started, and I feel like he needs to add the Twilight. There it is. Maybe a second Forge as well, since he, he could just go straight into 2-2. Two, two. Um, but even that will be really difficult to make work. These Oracles run straight into that bio army, both of them dying. So Avalo no longer has his uh, scouting presence that the Oracles afforded him. Where are the observers placed? One watching the outside and one watching for drops, which is important since there's three loaded up for minigun. It's like he's just waiting for an opportunity to drop in there. Avalos' defense with the Templar was pretty good in the last map. I'd like to see him go back to that. But minigun already having this saturated third puts him in a really sweet spot. Like, minigun is just in a good position um, because he has so much more income than his opponent. He actually has an upgrade advantage. He's 2-2 is on the way. 2-2 not even started for Avalo. And keep in mind, Avalo is actually still on one forge. So, Minigun is in a great position. I honestly feel like it was kind of bad luck almost on Avalo's part. Everything he tried to do in the beginning of the game got scouted out. Um, Minigun, and it feels weird to say Minigun got lucky because he did prepare very well versus what his opponent did. He didn't lose anything to Avalo's attack. He did a good job of defending it. But... Managing to find every pylon that was on the map. Managing to find that proxy at the very, very beginning. If he ran the SCV straight in, he definitely wouldn't have seen this setup there. So, it's weird, but... Minigun has caught a good couple breaks. And he's actually going to go straight for a fourth base. The third has not even yet started for Avalo. The army's trying to come save this, but loses the sentry. And he doesn't have charge. Um, he doesn't have his plus two. The Templar Archives is on the way, but... Avalo's being forced to move super, super slowly. And this this is the biggest difficulty of it all. Thankfully, this observer sees the Metavax. So if Avalo keeps his eyes open, he shouldn't lose anything to it. He's actually pulled back Colossi to try to defend. But Avalo has to keep his army perfectly split. Minigun scans. He says, oh, okay, this is going to be easy peasy cleanup because the majority of your army is actually tucked in your main base. Like that Colossi twerking right there. There's the big drop in the main. So he has enough here to defend against this without losing too much. But this third base from Avalo is about to get hit by a train. Chad uh, Wrecking Ball Jones is about to smash in. And I don't know if this army is going to get there in time. Not even the Mothership Corps is here for a time warp or anything weird of that sort. A couple force fields try to slow it down. But the Vikings kill a Colossus. No trouble at all. And he will snipe off another one. Avalo, ooh, there's no anti-air to save this. The Stalkers are not in position. The Colossi are just dying super fast. There's so many Vikings here for Minigun. He's just two-shotting these. GG Avalo realizes, okay, can't take that game.